Hello to everybody. My name is Gianluca Colombo. I come from Italy. And the title of my discussion, because it is rather a discussion than a presentation, is the human factor and the challenge of information technology. Uh, some information regarding my background. I'm a knowledge engineer and I work in knowledge management. My background is a bit strange because I started my apprenticeship in philosophy and then I decided to move to computer science. And I'm here basically for discussing together of some possible scenarios for thinking of the role and the meaning of knowledge technology. When you work as a knowledge engineer, what are you doing basically? Basically you are working with organization, trying to detect the so-called knowledge sources, try to figure out how is working the organization, try to model these knowledge sources and try to implement this and to provide the end users of organization with useful tool for uh, supporting decision-making processes. Of course, this is a very general definition and it implies to have a clear idea of what does it mean knowledge. And this is the very starting point of my discussion. Because for the time being, what knowledge is in computer science is nothing but trivial to be defined and understood. If you Googleize keywords like knowledge or knowledge management and information, you probably immediately retrieve this kind of representation. This is the pyramid that normally is used in, in informatic for talking about and defining the differences between data, information and knowledge. At the very ground of the pyramid, there are data, of course, that refer to atomic and single entity. Basically, they refer to the syntactical level of facts. Then you have at the second layer, the information that basically means that it represents an organization or configuration of basic facts according to spe specific purposes. And then you have the upper layer of the pyramid that is knowledge. As you can see here, knowledge is normally defined as know-how, understanding, experience, insight, intuition, and context contextualized information. Well, in this schema, like in any schema, there are a lot of implicit information that are triggering our understanding. The first of this kind of information is that there is a kind of continuity between data information and knowledge. And so the conceptual space in which we are thinking of data information and knowledge here is assumed to be the same. But this is something to me a bit tricky. And is a bit tricky why? But basically because I can indicate a data. I can manipulate information, but how can you indicate and manipulate knowledge? I cannot say, yes, this is knowledge. I can say, yes, this is data. I'm working with a database. Yes, this is a data. I can say, yes, this is an information because I entered a query and I have a set of structured data. But knowledge cannot be indicated. And so this is one point that is quite misleading, according to me in the decision over this kind of representation. Another assumption that implicitly this representation is giving is that there are more data than information and knowledge. In some sense, this makes sense according to the big trends today in, in, in computer science. Think, for instance, of big data. Big data are completely compliant with this idea. 
there are more data than the information that are collecting this data and organizing this data than the knowledge that is in some sense using this information for some human-based activity. Then there is a third assumption that I would like to stress and to focus here. And the other assumption is that there is a correlation between data information and knowledge. And what kind of correlation? This triangle is basically saying that without taking into consideration data and information, we don't know how to define knowledge. As you can see here in the definition, it's quite clear what are data. It's quite clear what are information, but it's not clear as well what is knowledge. And so the idea in the behind is that for thinking and defining knowledge, we need to have something to be manipulated. We need to have something real, touchable, that we can indicate as the inscription of knowledge. And so what is tacitly said in this triangle is that for understanding and define what is knowledge, I need to start from the inscription, from the science of knowledge. What does it mean, this? It means that for defining knowledge, we need to start from the practices where knowledge normally is taking place. And these practices are the writing activity. And so my proposal, my starting point for entering the knowledge dimension in computer science is to try to point out and figure out a definition or an approach to defining knowledge that focus on the role of writing. So, what is writing? Do you have an idea of what is writing? If someone is coming, is arriving, and is asking you, yes, but what is writing? Yes, perfect, writing. Something like that. It's exactly that. It means that whenever we are writing, there are two different elements that are taking part into the writing activity. On the one end, there is my hand with a pencil. On the other end, there is a sheet of paper on which I'm inscribing the signs. And what is really making the difference in writing is not only the capability of humans in manipulating symbols and sign, but also, and I would say especially, in the capability of building support, like a sheet paper. If you think of a, of a sheet paper, it happens something a bit strange when we are writing, because a sheet of paper ends, stops to be perceived as something material. The material properties of the sheet of paper basically stops. And we start considering this sheet of paper as a space of representation. It becomes a representational space. In this capability of humans of duplicating the meaning of a sh sheet of paper into something objective. Objective, I mean something like a hammer. When you have an hammer, the role of the hammer is to be used for striking nuts into the wall. And so the role of a hammer is outside from the hammer. But when we are talking 
of a sheet of paper in terms of a support, the sheet of paper is basically losing, losing his role, his meaning, in terms of physical properties. It is transformed into a space for the inscription of science. This is the capability of human of duplicating the world, of having on the one hand tools like the hammer and having on the other end representational space like the sheet of paper is. Well, in so doing, a kind of miracle emerge. There is a tradition, not in computer science, but in philosophy, that look into this duplication, the real specificity, the real differences from human beings and animals. It is not true that animals, for instance, are not able, are not able to speak. What animals cannot do is writing. They are not able to write. And according to what we are saying, it means that animals are not able to look and to represent and to imagine representational spaces for the inscription of science. This is, to me, a good entry point for understanding, also from a technology viewpoint, the meaning of knowledge and to separate the understanding of knowledge from the definition of data and information. Because here we are saying that the pyramid is no more a pyramid. Information and data are inscription that may emerge, may happen, because they are surrounded by a support. Well, but this is not enough. This is not enough because there are many supports. There are many representational spaces. And what is characterizing our capability of writing is the alphabetic technology. We are very skilled in using alphabet. And what is very interesting is to understand or to question or to ask what is the relationship between the support as a representational space and our capability of using an alphabet. To this aim, maybe an example may help. Imagine that there is a person who is going to a friend's shelter because he wants to have a chat with, with a friend. And suppose that when he arrives at the shelter, he finds a wooden board at the entrance door of the shelter with carved into the wooden board some images. There is the images of a boat, there is the images of a fisherman, and there is the images of three moons. Of course, the meaning of this tablet is that, sorry friend, I'm not here, I'm around fishing and I will be back in three days. Okay. And let's think at the same meaning, at the same situation, but not using a wooden board, but using a sheet of paper and the alphabet. There is a strong difference. And the strong difference is that whilst the wooden board has borders, 
is limited. The sheet of paper is infinite. There are no borders, like the strip in a Turing machine. It is not important from the standpoint of the alphabet to have a support with borders. But it's very important to have borders from the standpoint of the pictorial way of sending messages and sharing meaning. This is what happens with the alphabet. The alphabet is informing the representational space of the sheet of paper with an infinite properties. Is an infinite open space. So, what is this for? Why we are interested in this kind of analysis and definition that starts from some ideas of writing and then brings to some hypothesis on the way inscription works and then finally maybe is telling us something about knowledge. Because as a, a knowledge engineer and as a technologist, I'm really interested in understanding what does it mean when a representational space is no more a sheet of paper, but when a representational space transforms into a digital space. This is, to me, the real challenge of any knowledge technology. The challenge is not directly and mainly to work with the symbols and with the inscriptions. But the main point here is to think how to, to design and how to develop a computational support for writing. There is obviously a very big and huge difference between the adoption of a sheet of paper and the adoption of a digital support. A sheet of paper is basically transparent. There are no features inside. As you perfectly know, any digital support provides the user with some features. This means that whenever a digital support needs to be designed, there is a big responsibility of a designer with respect to the providing of an environment that allows users to say something and not to say something else. This is what I like of the knowledge topic in computer science. I like the idea that in computer science and technology and knowledge management and knowledge engineering, I would say, the main goal is to arrange support for making and allowing user to inscribe knowledge into this support. And what is happening? It's happening that, I mean, what is happening in this kind of reformulation of the problem? One of the main problem when when you go through knowledge management and knowledge te technology is that it is not completely clear what is the difference between an information system and information technology and between a knowledge technology. If I go into an, uh, an organization, this organization has some problems in terms of managing the knowledge sources, in terms of managing the organizational memories, in terms of understanding who is in charge with what, in terms of detecting where are the core competencies into the organization. And if my answer is to provide this organization 
with tools for speeding up the process of information retrieve or speeding up the process of querying databases, I'm not getting the knowledge level of technology. What I need to do for coping with the knowledge level of technology is to discuss with the end users to acquire their knowledge, to model their knowledge, and to negotiate with them the meaning of the information and the reason why they need some information. And so moving the representational space for the inscription of science from an analogical support to a digital one means to move the support into the playground of software design. These are basically the pillars for my argumentation today. And I would like to tell you the story or one story of a project I'm, I'm managing that is taking place in the framework of international cooperation. We were saying that whenever a knowledge technology needs to be arranged, the knowledge sources need to be detected. Knowledge sources means the person that are working and are living and are populating the organizations. And in this activity is hidden what for me is the human factor of this technology. The human factor of this technology make reference not to some computational problems. It's not the problems of applying machine learning techniques for automatically extracting knowledge, but the real problem of a knowledge technology and the real problem of knowledge management is to have methodologies for understanding and decrypting the way of working of organization and having methodology for writing down or thinking of a pipeline for moving from these conceptual models to the computational one. There is a quite nice example, I would say, of this kind of information that I'm talking about. That is a project that is taking place in the framework of international cooperation. In the framework of international cooperation, the knowledge topic is very relevant. Very relevant like in any knowledge organization. A knowledge organization is an organization in which the competitive advantage of the company is deeply rooted into the core competencies that are living into the organization. And the aim of knowledge management, as said, is to detect these core competencies and to provide these core competencies with some supportive technologies. And this is the same in the framework of international cooperation. I don't want, of course, to go through into the definition of what international cooperation is, but international cooperation basically works like that. There are some financing that are expected to be used to support the development of so-called less developed countries. And there are implementing agencies that are in charge with the definition of project for using this financing. One of the main needs in the framework of international cooperation and one of the main needs that are in some sense driving the implementing agencies, implementation, project implementation, is exactly knowledge management. 
the problem of organizational development and international cooperation is to detect and to provide the, le the so-called less developed country with a better way of entering and detecting the knowledge sources. What does it mean this? It means that if we are working in a strange area of the world, such as Central Asia, and this strange area of the world is affected by climate change problems, one of the main aims of international cooperation is to provide local population with ways for harming against the results, the effect of the climate change. How to do this? You need to have best practices and you need to have some knowledge for understanding what is the problem and, and how to find out some solution for this problem. And this is exactly the reason why an implementing agency asked me to take part into a knowledge management project in Central Asia. What was the problem there? The problem there was that over the last 20 years, a lot of projects have been implemented in this area of the world for arming against climate change. But the very problem is that there is, there is no an organizational memory of that. Whenever a project ends, the information are lost almost forever. This is one of the cliché. This is one of the main, main problems of so-called knowledge management. And so this implementing agency asked me to find out some solution for that. And what they were implicitly asking me? They were asking me to provide them with a better way of retrieving documents. The formulation of the requirement at the very beginning of the activity was, please, guy, we normal, when we need to build up a project and we need to write a proposal, we normally go through Google. We enter some keywords and we go for searching for some core and valuable information. But there is two entropy in Google. We cannot really find what we are looking for. And so, may you please, as a technologist or a knowledge engineer, to provide us with a better way of retrieving information. Translating this, it means, can you speed up or improve the Google search engine? That is completely crazy, of course. Then I started going there. I took my flight and I went to Central Asia for trying to better understand what was really the problem at hand. And the first step was, yes, to answer the question that asks, yeah, but how is possible that after a project implementation, you don't have an access to the information and to, re and to the result of projects? And then I realized how, how works the project implementation in the framework of international cooperation. It works that, of course, local organizations are taking part into the implementation of projects, are taking part into the writing of projects, the project proposal. But all these local organizations are not provided with any instrument or tool for managing the information they are writing. The point there is not of speeding up the process of organizing information. But in this organization, in many circumstances and in many cases, the problem is to build something from scratch. And this is one important point that I want to highlight here. 
Because when you move in the Western context, in Europe or in America, you normally deal with organizations that are already using some technologies. And so the problem of knowledge engineering is normally the problem of a reverse engineering. And so you need to improve, in some sense, the services of existing technology. You are dealing with the existence, the presence into this organization of many different databases with many different data models for each databases and you need to work for integrating this data. But the situation is completely different when you are working, at least when I was working, in the framework of international cooperation. On the one hand, it's almost impossible to work in Western society, to go in an organization and not having technology for writing the information and for sharing the information. But the first situation I got there was a complete absence of this kind of tools. And so it gave to me a very relevant chance. And what is this chance? This chance was to start the process of designing and solution together with the end users. And so we started this process of understanding the needs, understanding the, the functioning of the working groups within this organization, and to analyze together the existing solution of the market and to see whether some of this solution could have been used for coping with the needs of writing and sharing the information. None of these solutions were satisfying the user's needs. And this is another amazing point because there is a large part of the world that is using, I don't know, Google Drive for sharing the information. But in that countries, Google Drive cannot be used. Why? Because the cloud or is not allowed or is, is perceived like a loss of the ownership. And so you cannot use this kind of very mainstream solution. And so the activity I did started from the analysis of the real needs of these end users and then proceed in the direction of finding out in the local countries competencies in software design and in software development. The main idea there was that in order to deliver and to offer a knowledge technologies to this kind of organization, it was completely mandatory on the one hand to involve the end users into the design of the solution and to involve the local software companies into the concrete development of the solution. So what do I mean by human factor of technology and especially of the human factor of knowledge technology? On the one hand, I mean the fact that whenever you need to arrange a knowledge technology, you need to take into consideration not the way you are writing, but the, re but the representational space that allows a writer to write. And on the second hand, 
What I mean is that for the implementation of this knowledge technology, a top-down activity cannot be followed. Whenever you think and you talk of a knowledge technology, you are always thinking of a human being that is taking part into the design and definition and also development of the solution. So, this is basically the main message that I wanted to deliver you. That the only way I see for thinking of knowledge technology is not like in the pyramid, that is to start from, from the very low level and to define what is data, what is information, and then to think of knowledge as a kind of specialization of information and data. But the very challenge for, let me say, feeling the future in knowledge technology is to bring into the design of knowledge technology the end users and to have methodologies for designing and implementing this solution together with the end users. And in this way, what is the real added value of this kind of initiative is that technology starts working as a cultural mediator. And the differences between culture, of course, are one of the main bottlenecks of any activity in the framework of international cooperation. But the chance and the opportunity that a technology is giving within this framework is to think as, as a at the technology as a way for filling the gap. A way for co-designing a solution and for discussing and negotiating with local economic agent a way of making this technology solution sustainable. Sustainable means that the solution is not dependent from financing but the solution can be self-sustained. And this is a lesson that I personally learned working very far from, from my home, that is in Central Asia, that we normally think, we normally think that for doing something innovative in technology, we need to go to the Silicon Valley and we need to have very smart and competent software developers, and that's it. We are thinking at the innovation in technologies, basically in the perspective of computational models, in the, th in, in the perspective of algorithms. But we never think that innovation in technology may emerge and may happen changing the process of conceiving, designing and implementing the technology. And this is something that to me take a big part into the feeling of the future of new technology because it's a way for in some sense getting free from the Google monopoly that is clearly a top-down solution. I'm not free to design and to decide anything when I'm talking of Google Drive. I just need to adapt to the palette of services that this technology is providing to me. But the idea of the knowledge technology is exactly the opposite. And so to involve, again, the end users that are working with the inscription, with knowledge inscription, with support that are designed exactly for the practices and the kind of activities they are carrying on. That's it. 
and we have 10 minutes, I think. And so, if you have some questions to ask me, because there are, of course, a lot of, I mean, concepts, a lot of information, and I hope that something is not clear. And so, if you can help me in, uh, in providing you with a better understanding, asking me some questions, Hello. So, when you were talking about uh, the development, you talk about one part that is making sustainable. And when you have even a minor development, for a custom development, for a small, uh, for a medium or even large companies, it gets expensive. Uh, you mentioned about making it sustainable. Can you elaborate a little bit more? on how can you make it sustainable uh, when many times it's very expensive? Yes, sure. Thank you for your question. What do I mean by making sustainable? By making sustainable and making reference to my experience, I mean something very, very precise. When I, I went in these countries, I realized that there was a big space for a new market. What kind of market? The market of knowledge management. It's plenty of organization in Central Asia with organizational problems. But nobody is providing them with su supportive technologies. The area of sustainability is exactly using these situations as a leverage. And so to detect the market opportunities and to design a technology solution exactly tailored on these market needs. This is the reason, this is the reason why in the co-design activity, not only end users need to take part, but also private companies. Because only private companies can provide me with an understanding of the real market and the real business model that can be figured out for making sustainable a solution like that. Yeah, I see. So what you are talking is not making sustainable for, uh, so not making uh, um, operational from one organization, but for the whole set of organizations that in that particular market were in need of that particular product. Exactly. Or solution. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. And this is the idea, at least, of mine, of giving a, a contribution to the development. Because in my understanding, development means always economic development. No other question. Very good. I need to collect my paper. Here. Hi, my name is Miguel, and I'm here from Sao Paulo. And I've started a project inside the company I was working for, now I'm out of this company, uh, of uh, knowledge management. But I've found a, a difficulty uh, with dealing, uh, on dealing with people. Uh, yeah. Let me be I can understand. clear. Um, people uh, resisted to the idea that the organization yeah, and even the, the bosses uh, resisted to the idea that knowledge must be of the company instead of the people. I know people uh, carry their knowledge, but uh, if knowledge is developed inside the company, the company should uh, keep up with it. So uh, my question is, 
uh, how to deal with uh, this kind of uh, resistance or this kind of reaction when you want to implement a knowledge man management uh, project? Wow. This is a very difficult question. Very difficult. But it's also at the very core of my presentation and message when I'm saying and talking about a human factor of technology, I was exactly talking about these kind of bottlenecks. 100%. So, of course, the answer is not easy as well. According to my experience, there are two ways of dealing with this issue. The first one is, in some sense, technology-free. You need some knowledge steward, a kind of broker that is going into the organization and is providing a kind of knowledge therapy, like a psychotherapy. And this is the role of consulting agencies. The world is plenty of consulting agencies whose mission is exactly to overcome the bottlenecks you are talking about. How is possible that the bosses of an enterprise are not understanding that the real reason why they are so good in the market resides in the employees? And how is possible that the, the bosses of a company are not accepting the existence of community of practices that are not following the rules of the organization, but they are interpreting a problem and finding out solution on the fly, independently from the protocols. In a large amount of competence of, of companies, this is exactly the the community of practices are exactly the place where core knowledge and core competencies hide. And so, on the one hand, a kind of cultural endeavor is needed. You need to go to the management of organization and you need to explain them how is working knowledge. What does it mean, knowledge? exactly in the direction I was trying to talking about. On the other end, you have technologists. And technologists are in charge with the definition of representational support. What does it mean, this representational support I was talking about previously? Basically means the definition of a palette of services that allows the knowledge career of an enterprise, of an organization, of better organizing their knowledge and better sharing that. And so the idea of a knowledge technology is to provide not only the community of practice with the solution, but also the management level. And once you start using this technology, then you cannot go back anymore. Same as, as soon as you start using the smartphone, you cannot go back to telephone, to phone. It's impossible. As soon as you start using an email client, you cannot go back to the paper-based letter. And so as soon as you provide this organization with an agreed way of better organizing the data information that is much compliant with the way of working of the organization, then the bosses cannot say no thank you because it means that they are destroying the organization. Uh, you told us about two ways of dealing with it. This is the one. No, this is the second. The second. The first one is independent from technology. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. 
Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Hello. I used to work with uh, knowledge and with databases that differ from other databases. And I used to work in a single company that had this kind of problem, like uh, one database, another database, and we had to intercalate uh, uh, all the information. What is the, uh, the practical way to do that without resources to, uh, to too many people like uh, is there any kind of uh, automatic solution to this yeah. instead of just querying uh, each database because sometimes the information is written different yeah thank you for <coughs> for the question this is a, a very well known problem that is the one of data integration and the har har harmonization of different data models. Again, here knowledge plays a big, big part. In what sense? Plays a big part because once a schema of data has been extracted from a database, you need in some sense to enrich, to enrich this schema with semantic. And you need to do this with one database and with another database. But what is the semantic? Where is the source of the semantic? Again, the source of the semantic is in the guys which originally implemented the database. Because the very knowledge, as far as I know, according to my experience, the very knowledge when you deal with databases is in the query. You have a repository of data, but then how can you enter a query and to extract exactly the information you need? How can you formulate the SQL query? Only a person who perfectly knows the model of the data. Otherwise, it's completely impossible. And what is happening if there is only one person in charge with this knowledge? And what is happening if this person is, is going away, is quitting the job? This is knowledge management. This is exactly one of the most clear examples of what does it mean to deal with the management of knowledge. And again, here there is a strong human factor because you cannot resolve this problem alone. You cannot just apply some computational technique for extracting the schema of the data. Then you do the same with the other database, and then you do the mapping. Because for doing this mapping, uh, mapping you need knowledge. And you don't have this knowledge. And this is exactly the point of having a technology which is working with the support. What are the real needs in this organization? To detect the rules for the mapping and to detect the semantic, the semantic level of the data schema. In my understanding, a knowledge technology should help you in carry on your activity in strict collaboration with the guys which implemented the database and with all the employees or stakeholders that are interested in query the data. Thank you very much.